Just before we start the show, I want to take an opportunity to invite you to join me for the Podfluence Weekly Newsletter, which is available both on LinkedIn and through the official newsletter channel. Now, if you are on LinkedIn and it's easier for you to follow there, then please just click on the link in the show notes, which will take you straight to Podfluence on LinkedIn, where you can subscribe for free and get weekly updates on Podfluence articles as well as episodes. If you would like to subscribe to the full newsletter where you'll get additional materials and, as my little incentive to you, my pre-podcast guest checklist for you to use when you're appearing on podcast shows so that you can be fully prepared every single time, then please click the link to the official newsletter in the show notes. Hope to see you there. Let's get on with the show. Welcome to Speaking of Influence and right now we are going out live and I am joined by a guest who is certainly someone who uh, I've never spoken to anyone like this before. He is a, a, an ex-professional stuntman and stunt director and now he is a professional speaker who employs some of his stunt skills in his presentations making them super exciting with things like uh, nunchucks and whip cracks and uh, you will get to meet very shortly the incredible John Davis uh, after the titles. Welcome to Speaking of Influence, the podcast for speakers and professionals or anyone who wants to present with impact. Hosted by presentation persuasion coach John Ball. Remember to like and subscribe. If you're thinking of starting a podcast, there couldn't be an easier way to get started than getting started with Buzzsprout. They have all the tools and resources you need for starting a podcast and getting out to all the major podcasting networks. Check out the link in the show notes and get your podcast started today. John, welcome to the show. Uh, great to be speaking with you. I'm very excited to be here. I think we're going to have some fun today. I think so. And uh, having seen, having been on your website and seen, and got a taste for some of the things you do, uh, you are an exciting speaker and presenter, and, and I know we're going to have some fun. I have never before met a professional stuntman or stunt director. Uh, how did you end up getting into that? It was a, it's a very interesting story. When I was a young man, I I, uh, I got my degree in architecture, and and um, on the weekends I was sneaking off and doing Renaissance festivals, and I ended up meeting two gentlemen who were two of the top fight directors in the country, and they saw talent in me and ended up giving me all their training for free um, because they really thought they wanted to be a part of my growth. So I went on. I got this goal to be a stunt man, a fight director, and 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 do a have a very physical career. And then when I was 22 years old, I was um, helping a friend of mine unload boxes of clay. He was a professional potter. I was, he, we were unloading boxes of clay from his van, and uh, I picked up an 80 pound box of clay and I turned, and my um, my back split in two, and I mean literally split in two. <laughs> um, uh, when I twisted and I fell and I, I was paralyzed, instantly paralyzed. And they hauled me to the hospital and the doctor says, uh, John, you have a condition known as spina bifida occulta. And what that basically means is the three of my vertebrae never formed properly at birth. And when wow. I made, did that twist that day, literally my spine clicked off and fell. And um, they told me that day in the hospital that you'll never be a stunt man. You'll never be a fight director. You'll never do anything physical in your life. And uh, it was in that hospital, somebody gave me a book called The Tao of Jeet Kune Do by Bruce Lee, which talks a lot about mental flexibility in there. And that book right. inspired me to continue on. And then I went on and, and I started working in film and, and stage. And I ended up doing over 4,000 live uh, sword fighting stunt shows all over the world, including the front lines of Iraq and Afghanistan on six USO tours. That's, that's incredible. So not only did you go through that horrific experience and discover that uh, the, there was something congenitally wrong with the spine, but then after being told that you couldn't do the things that that, that you were heading to on your path, you just, you found a way to do it anyway. The mind over matter equation. Absolutely, wow. absolutely. What, what I also, I also doing that Sorry, process, I was you, also, what was it pulled you through that well, i mean what was it just was it the bruce lee book particularly or were there other things that helped support you through that journey the bruce the bruce lee was a major part of it because he gave me the concept of when you when you come up against adversity to stay very flexible 
Uh, he used to say, be like water. And I'm sitting here right now with my glass of water, right? Um, be like water. Um, be flexible. Something comes up, you you around it. But over the course of time on the USO tours and on, and on the, you know, doing stunt work, I came up with a whole different concept. And the concept was um, how to, how to hack your fight or flight response. Because when you get a, somebody tell you, tells you flat out, you can't, the first thing that happens is all your fears come up. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things I'll tell you when you, when you're a stunt man and you're standing on top of a tall tower, getting ready to take a jump, you know, (laughs) they tell you, don't look at the tower, you know, don't think about what you're doing. Look where you're going to land, right? <laughs> so stay focused on the outcome. So I came up with a system called the five Fs. And the five Fs basically are the process of hacking your mind, hacking your fight or flight response, and um, coming out the other side very much more successful than you were going in. Well, great. We definitely want to get to finding out what those five Fs are, but we're going to hold off a little bit before we do and uh, and have a, a bit more of a chat about how you then started to make a journey from stuntman and stunt director into a speaker. Well, that's, that's a great story because it, it, it comes, it talks about my passion because what happened was I, I started doing my comedy sword fighting show and I started doing that all over the world. And I found that I was enjoying the times after the show more than I was on the show in the show. And in the show, I was up there and I was doing all the fun things I loved. I was using swords and whips and <laughs> doing all kinds of fun comedy stuff. But after the show, I was sitting in the audience for hours sometimes helping people break through their, their barriers because I had just I had gone through a lot of stuff in my life where I broke through barriers and I understood how to do that. So the more I started getting into that process of, of understanding how to break people out, out of their, their junk, I realized that's what I really wanted to do. And so, but I, but I wanted to marry what I, this new passion with my other passion. So I created the corporate action hero and um, yeah, I do whips and nunchucks. And I do, one of the things that I do that is really fascinating is um, in the finale of one of my corporate action hero speeches, I'll actually drag a per, the most timid person I can find in the room onto stage and using my five S principles, I actually, take them from never having cracked a bullwhip to not only cracking the bullwhip, but hitting targets that I hold in my hand in under five minutes. And it's literally through shifting their process. And so mm-hmm. I get to not only do all the cool things that I love to do before, but I also get to break people through into, into new levels of achievement. And, and they get to go off the stage feeling like Indiana Jones. They, yeah. And, and all their peers in the room who knew them as a timid person are living vicariously through them as well. They're going, oh, my God, I can't believe they did it. So yeah. it's really for that person who comes on stage a lot of times. And I, and I still get emails from people who tell me that was a life changing moment for them. I, I, I like the sound of that more than firewalking and stuff, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds, it sounds a, a, a bit more like, yeah, that's the kind of thing. And I grew up on those kinds of movies, always want, always loved watching all the stunts and things like that. And that would be right. such a cool thing to be able to do. A bit risky. I mean, like, don't try this at home, kids, kind of thing. But uh, uh, not without some uh, good supervision from someone like John. But um, really, is, is that not a bit dangerous to to get them up there uh, trying that out, especially if you could get her <laughs> in the process. Well, well, I have to I have to be willing to take my risk, but that risk that I take gives them an element of trust. I trust them, right? Right. The other thing is, I, I'm very confident. <clears throat> pardon me, I'm very confident in my in the process that I use to get them to do it, because um, I understand how the, how that five F works, and so one of the things I do is. When, the whole time I'm doing it, I never mention whips. I, I actually talk about fishing and going fishing. I get them in the mindset of fishing and casting their fishing rod. And I make jokes about that person over there. I point at the table and I say, and I get them all to do this fish gesture, right? This table over here. I say, there's all your fish. I said, now you have to choose which fish you hate the most. Right? And then you aim at that fish. Right? And so we get some really right. funny moments, but um the whole time, what I'm doing is I'm keeping her in a positive state. And the more I can keep her in a positive state of mind. And then I do a little neuro linguistic trick where I actually shift her process from um, learning a skill to knowledge of a skill. And the way that's mm-hmm. done is very simple is once I get them to crack, getting it to crack is easy. It's just a matter of, of showing them a very basic principle. And they go crack and they crack it. I go so did you, did you hear the whip crack? And I'm nodding, giving positive reinforcement. And she says, yes. And I go, so you already know how to make it crack. 
you ought to know how to make it crack. This is this gesture that I'm doing is called a uh, hypnotic wipe in hypnosis. And what's interesting about it is we all do it naturally. It's a it's a state where you go, uh, you know, somebody says to you, gosh, you look great today. You go, oh, stop. <laughs> right. And you, you have that gesture. You, you kind of blow it off. Right. Yeah. Well, we're all trained to know that means let it go. Right. So if you're in, in neurolinguistics, you can get them to, to clear their mind with a hand with positive reinforcement and follow the clear mind with exactly what you want them to hear. You already know how to make it crack. Mm-hmm. Right. So I did that three times for repetition. So I locked that in. Once I get them there, I go, now that you know how to make it crack, all you have to do is just focus your attention right on this target. Focus right here. And so once I get them out of their fear state, the other thing, the other thing is, is, um, their biggest fear when I hold that target is hitting me, right? Yeah. So I turn to them and I say, I say did you hear it crack? And I go, yeah. I promise you're not going to hurt me. You know, sometimes when you're on stage with a person, you got to lie to them. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> um, she could totally hurt me. It's happened right. once in, in hundreds and hundreds of times doing this. Right. right. It happened one, one time. Which is the reason why you now say she is that right? right? Yeah, that is exactly right. Because the one time I brought a man on stage, his testosterone kicked in and I almost lost my ear. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And actually, what was really what was really interesting talking about mindset as that man walked to the stage, his boss actually said out loud, I think this guy's going to get hit. (laughs) And so, So in my opinion, the guy was just following orders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was already implanted. The suggestion already, was already, already there. Already implanted. Exactly right. Crazy. So so my whole thing is when I'm on stage, my whole thing is is showing them their inner power, showing them what they can do and showing them that it's it's their own mindset and their own positive outlook. You know, the weakest thing in anybody's life is their attitude. Yeah. You know? So it's, 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 if they can get a positive attitude, it changes everything. Yeah, I, I was just telling you before we came on air about the wonders, the joys of Clubhouse, <laughs> this <laughs> new app that I'm on. And this morning I got uh, invited, uh, a previous guest of mine, uh, uh, Liam Norval, really great on, entrepreneur, really cool guy, um, has been inviting me into some of the rooms that he's he's hosting. He's uh, big in hospitality in London particularly and a uh, super cool chap. Uh, and so the the group, is, uh, they have all these groups and there's some of them as you'd expect to see this bit like, people like the the winners the people who are like all the big names in personal development courses and programs like that some of them obviously very good and some of them a bit sort of like snake oil kind of of people um but they're all there uh whereas this group is much about more about finding ways to be happy in life finding ways to increase your positivity and stuff like that so we were actually having this conversation uh about how how do you get yourself to being happier in life and that was part of my contribution this morning to to saying in that group that about how we talk to ourselves, like years of coaching experience for me, I understand how important it is that people correct, uh, have awareness of the conversation going on in their head and then do something about correcting it to speak well to themselves. Because we do, like you said about the, the suggestibility thing, we say those kinds of things to ourselves all the time all and the time. we implant those hypnotic suggestions if you like that are determining what actions we will or won't take or what we believe to be true or not true so you have a a quite unique way uh, although it uses some well-known principles but you have a a unique way of delivering that with your show well if if you if you think about if you think about the way the way the mind itself works you know you only live in one conscious moment that's the present moment right your past experience is just just a list of memories of present moments yeah. And your future is a place where you set goals for your next present moment, but you're only living the one present moment. Now, if you're sitting in your present moment and you're negative, you're creating a negative moment behind you. And so you're creating a subconscious belief behind you that's negative. You know, you've got to set that that negative belief down and start creating positive moments and start stacking them in your present moment. But here's the cool part is that when you're in your present moment and you want to achieve anything in your life, your subconscious mind is designed. There's two layers of your subconscious mind. There's the, the memory layer, and there is the active con- subconscious layer that is helping you achieve what you're trying to get. Right. And here's, here's an example. Say, say you decide you want to buy a car, right? And you choose what kind of car you want before you go to the store to buy it. Suddenly, you start seeing that car everywhere. It starts, you know, hey, there's that kind of car again. Hey, there's that yeah. kind of car again. 
The reason that is, is because you consciously chose something in your present moment and your subconscious mind is showing it to you to help you achieve it. So if you can consciously stay focused positively in the present moment, your subconscious mind will start to show you more positive things. And then your then your subconscious memories will start to get stacked with positive, And then everything gets much better. <laughs> everything gets much so better. This is that what you focus on expands kind of principle and that we can, you know, for, for the more scientifically minded, that we can influence our reticular activating system in our brain and exactly. to, to what we are actually focusing on and selecting because we do have all this information coming at us all the time. And we are really picking out a very small percentage of that. And much of what we pick out or how we pick it out is based on our conversations, our beliefs, our, our expectations, and all of that as well. Really important stuff, Dick, uh, John. Yeah, absolutely. Well, but check out check out this. You know, you, you were talking about, you know, how do you, how do you create a, a joyful, happy life, right? And so your present moment is the moment, your, what I call your I am moment. You know, whatever you put after the words I am is what you are creating into your present moment experience. So I, when I'm coaching a client, I take certain words out of the vocabulary. You're not allowed to use these words anymore. And those words are wanting, needing, hoping, and trying because none of them are active present moment words. If you are, I am wanting, you're just creating more want, right? Mm -hmm. So how about I am creating, I am enjoying, I am a thriving, you know, I am doing amazing things. I am going to hit this target with my bullwhip. Right. Those are the moments that you want to do, because a lot of people sit in their present moment and they look at where they want to go and they and they just they feel this this um, struggle of I have to get to that. But that's right. not the way achievements work. The way achievements work is you you stack present moments here and you make small present moment successes. And that big success comes to your present moment, because when you finally do experience that success, it's not going to be in the future. It's going to be in the now. And so you've got to do all the things right here to bring it to you. And that's what most people don't realize is that it's really, really is the small present moment, positive actions that bring that positive experience around your life. Yeah. And I'm doing a, a talk about this at the moment for the World Championship of Public Speaking. And uh, uh, so it's my entry into the contest. <laughs> and um, one of the points of that, of the talk is about this idea that, um, one of the reasons why most people don't have the success they want is they just focus on this one event out into the future and don't focus on who they are now and mm -hmm. how they're showing up in their own lives and thinking about who they need to be showing up as to create the kind of results that lead to the outcomes that they want to experience right, right. in their lives. Yeah. You, and you, you have to set goals. You have to set goals because that's how you move. That's what you're, yeah, of course. you're going for something. Right. But None of those goals have ever magically appeared in your present moment, right? It only it's totally dependent on what you do right here, right now. If you want to become the, a top speaker, then the first thing you have to do is you have to study speaking. I know when I first started speaking, one of my goals was to get as much stage time. Now, I had done 4,000 comedy sword fighting shows with thousands of people. So I had lots of stage time. But here I was in a situation where I was shifting into corporate speaking. You know, yeah. How are they going to take the guy who wears tights and lives in the woods seriously? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so how's that going to happen? Right. I had to do everything I had to do. I had to educate myself on, on what speaking was. Right. And then I had to go get something under my belt. So I, it, you know, here in the States, we have chambers of commerce all over. So every little town has a place where all small businesses come to. Right. And so I volunteered to go speak to as many as I possibly could just to work the material out. You know, so I went and I worked all the material out. And then I, I um, once I got the material worked out, I started pitching it to larger and, and bigger audiences. Here's the here's one big secret about speaking that I'll tell uh, any new speaker. You, you know, go out and get your experience, but realize that free speeches will get you one thing. More free speeches. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah you, right. you, yeah, you won't you won't get money in this industry until you value yourself first. Yeah, there's um, a lady I got to chat to a while back. She's a speaker's agent, a lady called Lee Hayes. A great lady. I loved it. She was a great guest as well. And one of the things that she was saying is that 
uh, similarly about doing free stuff is like uh, there should always be some value. It's like, I'm not saying don't do free stuff, but there has to be value in it for you. Uh, so either maybe very early on, it's just getting you out there and, and actually doing it, the, that's value for you. But then after that, um, the value has should be that is maybe connecting you to the right people or putting you in front of people who can maybe help to progress you or say, all right, we want, we want a bigger stage and we'll pay for it. Like the, the value needs to be there, even if it's not direct monetary value early on. It will, well, let me let me add help. let me add to that though, because you know I've been speaking for a long time, and I I'm I I really don't have to even look for work anymore. It comes to me, and um, I still get the people who contact me who say, "Well, you can come speak for my group, and and we don't pay anybody anything." In fact, I got one of these yesterday. We don't pay for speakers, but you get you'll get exposure. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I <laughs> Thanks. Bye. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, yeah, exposure is not going to fill my belly, but thanks. Right, right. And, and you know, it's it, it, it. In some ways, I understand where they are that they don't have the money and they're wanting for something great. On another level, I get kind of a little bit offended at the fact that they don't value what I do. And so I'm like, you know, what I'm a professional speaker, and and I'll tell you something interesting. I didn't get well. I didn't get my first $1,500 speech until I said I was a $1,500 speaker. I didn't get my first $5,000 speech until I said I was a $5,000 speaker. And I did right. not get my first $10,000 speech until I said I'm a $10,000 speaker. And yeah. you know how long it took me to get my first $10,000 speech? It took uh, me a week. Well, a week? Wow. <laughs> I changed I changed my my number. Someone contacted me. Because people when 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 clients are looking for a speaker – they start with their budget. Of course. And I'll tell you another interesting experience. Anybody who's paying you very, very little, you're going to get treated very poorly. Um, when you get to the levels of ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a speech, you get treated like a rock star. You get picked up with limos and you get taken there and you get given all the gifts and you get the, 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 the swankest room and, you know, you're bought dinners and given gifts and all, <laughs> amazing things, right? They yeah. treat you so much better at the higher levels because they, they see value in what you do. And if you want to get to that kind of level, you have to see value in you that first, right? I had to, I had to look at my experience and go, okay, I have 4,000 comedy sword fighting shows under my belt. I'm a stunt man, a fight director. I've been on fire. I've jumped off buildings. I've done crazy, crazy things. I've been on the front lines of Iraq and Afghanistan. So I've got an incredible story, right? That story has value. Any yeah. speaker who's talking right now has a story and their story has value. And if they're not willing to take that, that value in their story and, and, and claim it as value, then they're never going get, to get value in their career. Yeah, well, I would say that makes sense. It, it's still, you do have to put in the groundwork to becoming a speaker, not just learn, learn your art, but practice it well. And, uh, and I think that's one thing that uh, often people do sort of think they can just start and and the money's going to roll in. And it's like, uh, these days, <laughs> good luck. You know, the, the competition in the industry is, is probably bigger than it's ever been. And maybe even more so now because a lot more people are making, have been pushed out of um, maybe lifelong careers and the likes and are reevaluating things. What could I do? Mm, let's give this a go. So, so right now, you know, there's uh, a lot of people moving into areas that you might not have expected them to, uh, and there's competition. So you really have to be able to stand out there as well. Right. You you have to stand out in the crowd. I'll tell you one of my biggest selling points bef before COVID. <laughs> before COVID, my biggest one of my biggest selling points was, and it was all over all of my materials that went out that I didn't use any powerpoints or slideshows. And I don't, right. I don't use a screen or a projector. And that is one of the biggest selling points. People say, oh, thank God. Yeah, I don't oh, use Oh, thank it. God. Je Jeff Bezos banned them, right, in, uh, in yeah. meetings and presentations. I think it was a well, wise if, decision. If, from a neurolinguistic and a hypnosis standpoint, the second you put a, a speaker on stage and a screen behind him, you've just split the audience's focus, which drops them into a state of a, a subtle state of trance. Once they get into that subtle state of trance, you've shut off their content retention, Right. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is instead of giving them an anchor on stage uh, on a screen behind you, right? Give them a, 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 a an anchor. Like for, for me, I, I anchor things with a bullwhip crack. I make a big booming noise when I'm going to anchor something, right? 
or I make a big laugh or I pull out nunchucks and I talk about flexibility, right? right. And I make jokes. Um, but I'm anchoring it in in, in neurolinguistic ways. I'm not anchoring it in ways that goes right into the mind as opposed to splitting their focus between me and a screen. Once you do that, you've kind of lost them. That's why you, if you ever notice, as soon as you turn the screen on, the cell phones come out. As people start doing other things at their table because their mind is now split they can't stay focused on one thing. You know, when I'm up in front of the stage and, and I have a bullwhip, I have their attention, right? Because they're yeah. afraid they're going to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not going to ignore the, ignore the guy with the bullwhip on the stage. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool. I mean, I, I guess now you're doing online presentations. Are you still able to incorporate any of this into them? Oh, my gosh, yes. You know, it's so funny. When when COVID hit, I know I've know I know lots and lots of speakers. When COVID hit, they all panicked. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't go into rooms with people anymore. Well, what am I gonna do? I was like, you know, I was already making videos. And I saw so I already had a studio, I already had the lighting, and I already had the green screen, I had all that stuff, right? And so I was like, okay, so this is just an easy shift. So I just started putting together virtual programs. Now, what's cool about those virtual programs, you know, for me with whips and nunchucks and all that stuff. I really can't do that in this sort of environment unless I had the, a giant stage somewhere that I could set up on. But what I could do was I could I could leverage all that great video content I had of me doing whip stuff. So mm. I come on and I talk to them this way, and then I then I make a joke. I say, you know what? I want to show you something. Let me step over to my other studio, and I act like I'm walking away, and I and I go to a, a video of a live live event. And then I have a little thing that comes up that says, my other studio comes with a live audience. <laughs> right? And, and I, Kept I, them trapped I, I, in there all the way through the pandemic. Right. And, and the, my, my clients tell me that they were like, adding the video really broke up the content. It really made it something. Now, on another level, having, you know, sitting here talking like this, they're not hearing applause. They're not hearing laughter. They're not hearing anything. Right. Exactly. It, yeah. It's all on them. The second I add a video, they hear laughter, they hear applause, they hear the whips, they hear all the other things. It changes the dynamic of the virtual presentation. So COVID-19, I'm going to come out of COVID-19 with more live events because people are going to know me more because of all the video and all the stuff I'm doing. I'm going to come out with a new virtual product, which is much easier to sell. And I don't have to travel 200 days a year like I did the year before COVID, right? And then I'm going to... Oh, I'm right now working on online uh, courses and and my video content. I started a podcast and, you know, I have so, all this stuff. So COVID to me, you know, just like my back, when my back went out, I had to keep that mental flexibility. COVID happened. I didn't take it as a dire natural disaster that ruined my life. I took it as an opportunity to be flexible and create something new. Yeah. And that's really the key. I, I very much, I very much did a similar kind of thing. I, I, I knew that either I was going to sink into misery about this, or I had to do something to turn turn it around and make it work for me. And luckily, I was able to find ways to turn it around and make it work for me. I, I know some people haven't really felt that they were able to do that, and some some people it's been a much tougher struggle than others. And, and I and I get that, and nobody should feel that they that they have to do this, but if you can, and if you can find a way to do it, oh my goodness, it's going to help. And uh, I'd say for me, my growth over the last year has, has been fueled by COVID, unfortunately, but you know, good things that come out of uh, bad, bad situations. They can. Well, it's, it's like the whole, like I said, the whole virtual thing, the, 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 my quality of life is better. <laughs> you know, because the year before yeah. COVID, as, as I said, I traveled 200 days out of 365 day year. Right? That's a yeah. that's a lot of traveling. That's yeah. a lot of times away from home. Whereas people, now I'm like, you know, you don't even know if I'm wearing pants right now. <laughs> Likewise, <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. I think. But a lot of people have been um, taking the opportunity to reevaluate their lives for sure. <laughs> Uh, some people have had to, uh, and some people just have, with you know, having more time at home, recognized, hey, you know, they were, they're just breaking that routine of uh, the nine to five or uh, eight to seven, whatever hours people are working these days, um, is has been enough for some people to start to have realizations of this doesn't have to be my life. 
right. and, and start right. to look at other possibilities. Uh, I know for, for me, uh, we, uh, me and my partner, we realized that we wanted to, we loved the quiet. <laughs> and right. uh, we hadn't realized that until, until the lockdown because the city is always noisy. And so we've bought a house now in the mountains in a beautifully quiet village. It's a big house and we're getting it renovated and it's like, we're really excited about it. Um, you know, th- things that I don't know that we would have done that had uh, had all this not happened. And uh, I think we would have just looked for a, a, a bigger place in the city. But yeah, so many people reevaluating themselves. But well, within, I mean, now that you've gone into a, a virtual world, you, you can work more remotely. Yeah. You know, you can get out there. I'm, I personally, I'm, I'm looking for a beach house right now. Cool. Because I, I want to go back to the beach. I, I'm originally from the beach, so I wanted to go back to the beach. I'm I'm currently living in Akron, Ohio, and we just had our 22nd uh, accumulating snowfall of the year. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, right now on my back deck, I have 18 inches of snow on my deck. It sounds like fun. <laughs> no, it's not. No. Uh, very pretty, but uh, yeah, not fun. Um, yeah, we not much chance of seeing any snow where I am here in Valencia. We'd have we have to go into the mountains for that. But yeah. um, but but nonetheless, you know, th- life has been changing, and yes, there are challenges, but there are always opportunities as well, and and that's what what we're seeing. The people who stay focused on opportunities, and the people who are, I think, the people who have been able to be the ones who say going to find the opportunities we will get through this we will be okay have have been essential because we need we need to have people that we can look to and say okay people there are so many people who are feeling confident who know that we can get through this and who understand that even in times of great adversity there is still lots of opportunity and it won't work out that way for everyone but it never does is I no, not that much has changed, just maybe where the opportunities are have changed. And I know for me, like going into the virtual world, getting deeper into podcasting could not be a better time for me. More and more people coming into the podcasting world, thankfully, um, it gives uh, gives potentially great opportunity. And uh, for doing like teaching and presentation work, everyone's on Zoom now, um, whereas before they weren't. Not not right. everyone was. So yeah, there, there's uh, huge benefits, um, and but we still hope that we can get to a point where we can return to some kind of normality as well, and do more live stuff uh, and everything else as well. Right, of course. Well, when when people when people have that moment of adversity, the first thing they do is they drop into their fear, and when they drop into their fear, they have to first realize that you know, and it's I'm going to kind of. T- touch on something. It's the first of my five F's, F's is fearlessness, right? Yeah. Because most people, when well, you can't talk about fearlessness unless you talk about what fear is. Most people don't know what fear is. When I ask my audiences, they go quiet. And, and then somebody in the back of the room will say, false evidence appearing real. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. That's the whatever. cliche dance, right? <laughs> <laughs> it totally is. But I don't believe it because fear itself does not come with evidence. Fear, when you break it down scientifically, is an emotional reaction to some future event that may or may not happen with their focus on it being negative, right? Because right. you're, you're afraid of it. That's why you're, 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 you're just negatively focused. If you really break it down even smaller, it's negatively focused on certainty. Yeah. And so that's all fear is. So if you can sit in your present moment and, and, and compartmentalize your fear. Now, how do you compartmentalize fear? The way you do it is you do it the way every stage performer does it, every every actor does it, every stuntman does it, every military guy in the field does it. First thing they do is they exhale. <sighs> and the reason they exhale is because in the fight or flight response, we have a natural reaction. It looks like this. <gasps> you know, we have that gasp, you know, total fear. Well, what that's doing is that's filling your lung up as fast as it possibly can so that you have air in your body so you can run further and faster. Most people think that they're in, that when they are in fear, they can't breathe. It's not that they can't breathe. It's that their body is keeping air in. And if you can exhale and relax all your muscles, it shuts off the fight or flight response, which has superseded your how your brain is working, right? Mm-hmm. So an actor on stage who forgets all their lines will go, will go um, I'm, I can't remember my lines. And all their lines rush back into their head because they've shut off the response. And so you've got a first thing you have to do is set your fears aside. And then when I talked to the soldiers in the field, I said, so what, how do you do that? I said, well, we compartmentalize it. We just let it go and get focused on our objective, fearlessly focused, right? <laughs> you mind if I go into the five Fs? 
No, please do. We wanted okay. to come around to this. So, yeah, great. Fearlessly focus. They say we have an objective. That same thing I said earlier about the stuntman on top of the tower. You know, they're focused on landing on a pad. They're not mm. focused on jumping. So you have to get focused, but the it's that positive focus that you have to focus on. You have to choose to, to be positive. Most people think the world is a negative place because the news tells us so. But when you think about it this way, say you live a half an hour from a city and you commute to work and say on that commute, you pass a thousand cars every day. Well, every other day or so, or possibly every day, you might see a car on the side of the road that had a fender bender, a little accident or something, you know, so one a day, the car on the side of the road, it's going to be on the news tonight because it's the anomaly. What should be on the news is that 999 cars made it safely to their destination without a problem, right? So the world the world is predominantly positive anyway. Yeah. The thing is, we need to stop focusing on the negative aspects and start focusing on the positive. So fearlessly focus. Here's the next one. The tough one is faith, belief, confidence. I don't mean spiritual faith. I don't mean religious faith. I mean confidence, true, honest-to-God confidence. Because mm -hmm. if you don't believe in what your, your outcome is, you're never going to achieve it. You have to fearlessly focus with faith. And then here comes the really hard part, follow through. You actually have to do something. You have to take your thoughts, words, and deeds and put them into action. Yeah. What happens a lot of times is people get into this phase of it and their fear kicks back in and they have that reactive state. You know, I call it being a reaction zero rather than an action hero, right? So you're going to be fearlessly focused with faith and follow through. Those small steps are the thing that gets you the outcome. And then something like COVID is going to come up that's going to seem contrary to what you're trying to do. And you have to, in those moments, stay flexible. Fearlessly focus with faith, follow through with flexibility. There's your five Fs, right? That flexibility is interesting because earlier we were talking about that goal. You get that one goal that you're going towards, and something always comes up. Hmm. But as I said earlier, your subconscious mind is showing you things. And so if you have a, a, a conscious goal and something comes up that seems contrary, it's because your subconscious mind is saying, this needs to be dealt with for you to get your goal. So you don't lose focus on your goal. You, you, you t say, okay, I need to either incorporate, uh, remove, or, um, or just deal with this thing that has come up. And so stay focused on the outcome and anything that comes up, just look at it as part of the process yeah. as opposed to something that stops you permanently. That's, so a, that's, that's, basic, a great that's the basics of the five Fs. It's a great way of thinking about it. I really, I really like it, and it's very, very positively focused. I know that you know, teaching these kinds of things to people, there's nearly always one word that comes back. And uh, so, what, what do you do when someone when someone's got a big butt? <laughs> well, well, there's two conversations there. I'll stick with the clean one. <laughs> um, uh, well, a butt is, is uh, the third of the five Fs. That that means they don't have faith in it. Right. Um, so I, so I say, do you believe it? Do you believe it? And they say, no. I said, well, why not? Because they don't believe they can. Well, they're saying once again, they don't have faith. So my, my job at that point, if I'm, if I'm leading them through the process, I have to now start to show them things that they can achieve. I have to start to show them that there's somebody who does achieve, right? If I can give them small little successes, the person on stage with the whip, you know, I'm getting them to crack the whip. But before I even get them to crack the whip, I get them to come to the stage and they're the most timid person I can find, right? So I'm already giving them successes. Once they get to the stage, it's the positive reinforcement that gives them the strength, gives them the faith. So they come on stage and I, and I turn to the audience and said, isn't she a rock star? And they cheer for her. So we're already pumping her up, right? So the more positive reinforcement you can give, the better. My father used to say, you know, one oh crap wipes out a thousand attaboys, right? <laughs> right. But that oh crap has no value unless you give a thousand attaboys. You've got to give the positive reinforcement because now my son is 17 years old right now, and he's uh, he's teaching me all kinds of new lessons and hormones right now. But <laughs> um, but one of the things that is interesting is we have a relationship. I give him positive reinforcement all the time, but when he does something wrong, I just go. Excuse me? 
And he knows that that was because I, I don't need to go ballistic on him. He just knows that when I say, excuse me, that wasn't a good thing. Right. But I had to give him a thousand positive reinforcements first for that. Excuse me to work. And so it's the same thing with when someone says, uh, but I can't. I said, well, well, as Henry Ford once said, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which which all ties into um, our expectations, ruling our outcomes, and and even our decisions whether or not to take action on the things that could positively or negatively affect us. And um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's all it's all it's all going on up here. It's all a battle in here. And and if you haven't if you can't win that battle first, the, then the the outside stuff isn't going to go great either. It's like unless, I'll go, unless and I'll go one step further. It's mind. it's the only battle, right? Your 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 mindset is your only battle. I I I literally have jumped off three story buildings and been on fire and done all those things, right? And the only battle I had was getting my mind behind it. Right. And when I was lying in that bed, my back was and I was paralyzed. I could I could not stand. Doctor said we're going to fuse your back with a metal pen. I told the doctor no because I have a goal and my goal is to be a stuntman fight director. And if you put a pin in my back, I'll never be able to do a high fall or a roll. And so I never had the back fused. I just took a different route. I started doing yoga. I started exercising. I started strengthening my back. And I went on and did over 4,000 sword fighting stunt shows. Incredible. It's so, all so, reminds me. <laughs> so here's, here's something. Uh, generally, I will push myself to do most things, but I know there's one thing that I'm still terrified of and I still haven't done it, even though I've promised one of my good friends that I will, which is to do a tandem parachute jump. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am, it's probably the only thing that scares the crap out of me is, is jumping mm -hmm. out of an airplane and, uh, and yeah, seeing what happens. You know what that is? Go on. That's the two times you said, I am terrified or I am scared. That's you de declaring in your present moment that, that you're afraid. What is fear? Negatively focused uncertainty, right? So you're declaring in your present moment that you're afraid of it. Why don't you declare in your present moment that you're going to not only do it, but you're going to enjoy it? Mm. That'll change your whole experience, <laughs> won't it? It will. Um, it's going to need a bit of work, I think, but it will. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say I'm glad you said that because that's one of my favorite topics. I hear people all the time tell me, quote unquote, struggle equals growth. And I say, why are you focusing on struggle? Why are you focusing on it's going to be a lot of work? You know, a lot of times people will sit in their present moment and they'll, and they'll start to do those small successes. And one moment doesn't go the way they thought. Right. A lot of times what happens in that moment is they go, I'm so dumb, and they smack the top of their head. That's why I'm bald, right? <laughs> Same reason, <laughs> right? But the thing is, is doing that and beating yourself up and having self-defeating thought in that next moment is just wasting a moment. Yeah. What I've done over the course of my life and, and in this process that I've gone through to do the things that I've wanted to do is when I have a moment that, that doesn't go like I want it to go, I just say, well, that's silly. I'm not doing that. And I go back to doing something positive. You know, as a fight director, I, I, I'm an expert in Elizabethan sword play, uh, Western gun, gun spinning. I do nunchucks. I do bull whips. I do quarter staff. I do lots and lots of different things. I spent thousands of dollars to feel really dumb <laughs> because I go into a room with these people who are experts and, and I just feel it awkward. And But during that time, and rather than focusing on feeling awkward, I focused on this is so cool. I'm learning something new. And by having that kind of outlook, I got to work with people like Patty Crane, who was Errol Flynn's stunt double, you know, and, you know, I get to work with, with uh, Kyle Rowling, who is a named Jedi Knight in Star Wars. I, my, my good friend, um, Bron McGash, and I just had a, a two hour conversation for my podcast. The other day. Bron McGash was the, the fight choreographer, swordmaster for Highlander. So, I mean, Amazing. It was that 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 idea of all of my experiences are going to come out to positive yeah. that have taken me everywhere I've ever wanted to go. Mm -hmm. I love it. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't think anyone's going to be seeing me with a bull whip or nunchucks on on stage anytime soon. I have been considering the hula hoop. Uh, oh, a little, yeah. a little bit less dangerous, uh, but still kind of <laughs> attention grabbing. So uh, I fancy my challenges, uh, my chances with that. But uh, and, yeah, and I'll yeah. tell you what, you bring an audience member up and give them hula hoops. That's that is a <laughs> that is a winning winning speech part. It really is <laughs> because they love to see their peers doing stuff on stage. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I, I guess you have to be very careful who, who you bring up for for those those sorts of things as well. Yeah, you you <laughs> learn who not to pick. You know, the 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 worst person you can pick is the person who they suggest because yeah. they're they're thinking, oh, he's the class clown. Let's put him up there, and that person is going to come up there and try to take the show. Yeah. Yeah. I always pick the most timid person I can find because I know that they'll just listen and pay attention and do what I tell them. Good advice. <laughs> I'm going to keep. I'm going to lock that one away, John. And and if I need to make those sorts I, of selections in the audience, that's. Exactly I actually what I have do. it in my in my material that goes out to my clients that I choose my own audience members. And I actually say in the thing, I say, I say, um, who you might think would be good at this probably isn't. <laughs> you know, and I said the class clown is not the person I want on stage. And then, <laughs> I, of course, I, I frame it as. I want the person that's timid because I want them to see the transition on stage, which is true. I do want that, but I also don't want the class clown on stage because they will ruin a show quick. So (laughs) it's good advice. If there's anyone who's been watching or listening to this uh, and if you could wave a magic wand and get every, everyone who watches the listens to take one piece of action or to do one thing after this what would it be make this present moment as successful as possible and in alignment with your goal because it's the only moment you have you can't go to the store next thursday right now you can't go to the store last thursday right now right now is all you have make it the best now you can wonderful john John, how can people find out more about you I am easy to find. I am corporateactionhero.com. And, and uh, one of the things I'd like to do for your audience today is those five Fs. I want to give you guys a, a free gift. It's the five F workbook. And when I say free, I want to make sure I'm very clear about this. Free means I get nothing, which means I don't even ask for your email address. We're going to give awesome. you a link and you go there and you download the book, right? I don't, the only thing I will ask that you're going to be on my website anyway, look around. Check, see if you like anything. You're going to find my my daily vlog. I put out a daily motivational video every day. Um, and you're also going to find a link to my podcast over there where you get to see me talk to amazing and extraordinary people. It's a brand new podcast. Right now, there's only two interviews on there. I've got 10 more in queue, but I, I get two that are on there right now. So go check them out. That's all, that's all I ask. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to be going and check, taking another look. I've already taken a look at your website. I want to download uh, my own copy of your five Fs uh, because I really want to ingrain that in my mind as well. And uh, certainly looking forward to checking out your podcast as well. I know it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I really appreciate you giving up some of your time to come and join us today. The conversation has been great. Uh, You shared so much wonderful stuff with us. Incredible stories, wonderful experiences. Uh, I could easily take more time with you, but I'm not going to be too greedy, John. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, John Davis, for coming and joining me on Speaking of Influence. And uh, I look forward to connecting with you again uh, very soon. That'd be great. Thank you very much for having me. It's been great. Okay, good stuff. So next week, you will be able to check out some new shows coming out. I have... uh, I remember who I've got coming up for you. Dave Bricker, storyteller and uh, extraordinary guy. That episode is going to be out next week. And some more in the series of humor and presentations. You'll get to see those episodes coming out too. Check out my new daily show, which is uh, goes out on live stream on Facebook and LinkedIn. It's called The Daily Present. And I have a brand new podcast coming out. You can go and check out the introduction. It's called Points of Change, inspirational stories and speaking to coaches, mentors, change makers and the likes about how they turn things around in their lives and the critical points of change for them Uh, so if you want to find out how change and great transformation happens from people who have experienced it or help others to do that check out my new show points of change and i'll be back next week with more speaking of influence too see you next time 
Thanks for tuning in. Remember to like and subscribe to the show. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review. It really helps. Why not grab yourself a copy of the Last Minute Presentation Checklist? If you want yours, visit presentinfluence.com and follow the download links. If you'd like to be a guest on the show or you know someone who would or you're interested in sponsoring the show or finding out more about presentation skills, please contact me, john at presentinfluence.com. You can find me on Twitter at John A. Ball or on Facebook. Join the group Speaking Influence and come and find out more as well as getting daily content from me and updates on all the latest trainings and courses available. Also, check out my new podcast, Points of Change, all about life transformation and the people who make that happen. Lots of great conversations going on there, available on all good podcast players. Have an incredible week and join us again next time on Speaking of Influence.